When the multiplier pin is lined up with the stationary pin, both input racks and the output rack are in zero position. To make it easier to see how this mechanism operates, let's put appropriate scales along each input rack and along the output rack. The values are plus in one direction and minus in the other direction. Now let's see. With an A input of plus two and a B input of plus three, The output is 2 times 3, or plus 6. Or with inputs of plus 4, and plus 4, the output is plus 16. Now let input A remain at 4, and change B to 0. The output is 4 times 0, or 0. When one input is 0, the output always is 0, regardless of the other input value. Now with one input a minus value, say minus 3 times plus 4, the output is minus 12. With both inputs minus, minus 2 times minus 4, the output, of course, is plus 8. Thus, the multiplier handles both positive and negative values. It instantly delivers the product of any two input values even though the inputs are continuously changing. The reason why the output of this mechanism is the product of the two inputs can be shown geometrically. Starting with the multiplier pin centered over the stationary pin, we'll use this line as a baseline. The distance along this line from the stationary pin to the pivot pin is a constant. Let's call it K. Let's assume input A moves distance A and input B moves distance B. Let's call the length of the output X. Now, a line along the slot in the pivot arm forms two similar triangles. Their corresponding sides are proportional. Therefore, X is to B as A is to K. Multiply both sides by B and we get x equals AB over K. In other words, the output x equals the product of the two inputs divided by K, a constant. Distance K is always a constant value in each multiplier, and its effect is taken care of by proper choice of input and output gearing. Only seven mechanisms were described in parts one and two of this series. And we have spent only a short time with each mechanism. But it was enough to indicate how mechanisms are used for computing. And how, by studying the mechanisms separately, you can gain much understanding of the instruments which solve the fire control problem.